Alex be out perch fishing again, and I want to take you through how I've been using the Flotex lures to bag a few fish. I've been fishing quite a few new venues that I'm not really familiar with, and so I've been using my search lures, which are the squirrelies and the small gonks. The squirrelies in real ale continue to perform really well for me. I think they're particularly good when visibility is quite good, you know, when you've got fairly clear water. Uh, and you don't really need to create a strong silhouette. Uh, the real ale is a fairly neutral colour uh, and it partially disappears in the water, which kind of makes it feel a bit more natural or look a bit more natural and you get more of a shimmer off the lure rather than a hard outline. This fairly neutral, subtle tone just seems to create a bit of a shimmer in the water that the perch just cannot resist. Fishing the squirrelies at a reasonable pace, moving from swim to swim, has put a few fish on the bank. down in the net just there. I know there's bigger down here. I saw it. There we go. Some sort of size. <laughs> that will do. So here we are, a couple of nice perch, look at them, crackers, uh, on the real ale, a winning colour, just seems to work so well for me, uh, not a strong a silhouette, uh, it just seems to fool them sometimes. Moving around the river, Fishing the squirrelies on a very simple three gram jig head allowed me to locate a few holding areas. These local stretches at the moment, um, you know, they haven't got an awful lot of flow in them. You know, most of it is only like a few feet deep, up to five foot deep. Uh, and with that in mind, what I would say is try and use the lightest jig head that you think you can get away with. Certainly in that scenario that I've painted there, three gram was absolutely fine. Certainly wouldn't want to go heavier. In fact, could have probably come down to sort of like two, two gram or so. Um, we know that perch like to hit these lures on the drop. Um, and yeah, using the lightest jig head that you can means that that, that drop, if you like, is slower and more accentuated. Of course, once I've found a few holding areas, I could start to apply my finesse techniques and I've spoken a fair amount about my love for the squirms and the Ned Rig. But what surprised me in the last couple of seasons is how the drop shot has reintroduced itself to my fishing. Sometimes, particularly if the bottom of the river isn't that clean, a Ned Rig just doesn't present that well. You're bringing it in with leaves on it. You know, it's, it's late autumn, so there has been a lot of leaves around. A lot of it's gone down to the bottom. And uh, sometimes in that scenario, bumping a little Ned Rig along the bottom isn't always the best option. And in that scenario, I've actually been doing better on the drop shot. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's in. Three, three again, this one. <laughs> on the drop shot rig, I'm losing the light. So I'm gonna get him back. Squirrelies on the drop shot has worked really well on the river, but it's also worked well on the canal as well, particularly around moored up boats and up against lock gates. Yes. 
under a bridge. But hey, look, finally got what we were after. Uh, not, not a massive fish, but good to be catching perch again on the canal. Uh, really have tried everything here. Finally got one on the drop shot, just half a squirrely, just nailed it uh, up against some lock gates. Something I've been playing around with on the drop shot is trimming down the squirrelies in a range of different colours and that's been landing some really nice fish. Trimmed down silverfish and toxic frogs seem to work really well. Something else that I would play around with is how, how far off the deck you're working those drop shots. Remember, these squirrelies are buoyant, so even if you set them really high, you're, they're not gonna drop, if that makes sense, you know, because they're buoyant. So something that I've played around with and that worked quite well for me is actually setting your drop shot surprisingly low to the deck and working it really slowly, not even moving the weight and certainly not overworking that lure. Uh, drop shot squirrely, just half a drop, uh, half a squirrely on the drop shot. Uh, just a, a devastating method once you've found them. What's interesting is I set the drop shot quite low. Uh, it's fairly, you know, it's only a few foot deep if that, like two and a half foot and it's very clear. So um, I started fishing at about a foot depth, so sort of mid water decided to drop it right down so that's almost fishing on the bottom that drop shot you know it's only a, like about four inches off the deck as soon as i adjusted it i got a fish straight away there seems to be something about the squirrelies i think where when you separate the lure from the weight which is why it works quite well on the drop shot um, I don't know what that is, but I'm, I'm hearing reports that they're working quite well on Carolina rigs as well, which is, you know, probably for the same reason, just, just separating the weight from the lure a bit. So I am loving the drop shot once again, but I'm not quite ready to bin off the squirms. I do think a stick bait can land those bigger fish. A number of very good lure anglers do believe that the big perch are a little bit lazy. They don't move around much and a really slow stick bait still might bag you that real big one. I've also spoken before about how the squirms can really come into their own when things get cold. And you know, it is gonna get cold very, very soon, very, very quickly. And when it is really cold, the squirms are hard to beat. What I would say is that if they're not working, do consider switching up the profile of that stick bait, again by either trimming it with your scissors or maybe by changing up the profile entirely uh, by using one of the reggies. So fishing exactly the same way, still nice and slow, but sticking one of the reggies on. Other than cold conditions, there's another scenario where I think a stick bait and the squirms work really well, and that is honey hole fishing. A honey hole is an area where you've done really well in the past. You've clearly found a holding area and you've actually managed to sort of repeatedly catch fish from that spot. What I would say, if you're lucky enough to find an area like this, then of course you ain't searching anymore. Each time you go there, you really can just finesse fish and use those squirms. Here I am on a little opportunist session where I was bombing down the motorway and I decided to duck off in Hampshire to a couple of spots I found last season. And again, not searching, haven't got long. I'm gonna hit that spot and I'm gonna go straight in with a squirm. Good old Ned rig. Oh, 
right, like another hit. Yeah. Here's another one. <laughs> two chucks, two nice perks. <laughs> what the hell? There you go, two blackwater perch on the squirms, two casts, two perch. So there you go. That's how I've been using the Flotex lures recently to get some fairly decent results. I hope some of the tips in the video helps you bag a few perch on lures over the coming months.